I don't know. I think I think it's a very tricky question to to answer, but uh, because you know, of course, I have I have also been working in figuration, and you know, I been painting classical things and approached uh, figuration in all kinds of ways, and uh, and of course, I really appreciate uh, lots of figurative uh, paintings also. Everything from you know Velasquez and Botticelli to uh, Picasso and uh, of course, uh, but it's just I don't I don't have that interest in me. Uh, I think it's it maybe maybe it's because it's 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 uh, closing. You always have to relate something to to something which is concrete, and I don't like that. I I just want the full liberty. Uh, and I, I I remember when I first discovered Gerhard Richter uh, and saw the the differentiation between his figurative paintings, his more like classical, and his abstract, and then you have the things which is in in between. Uh, and uh, I remember discovering Sigmar Polk and Anselm Kiefer and Martin uh, Kippenberger and you know all the really great guys, the German art scene. Uh, but but also of course uh, American American uh, abstract painters like Jackson Pollock and you know uh, they 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 were much more interesting to me than than working with any figuration so so it just became a natural approach to the painting I don't know I don't know I tried to make them uh, on, on the side but it just doesn't work Maybe it's something about the physical thing also that uh, I like to work with something that is bigger than myself, you know, to have the and that, that's that the painting is looking down at me and I have to sort of I have to work a phys I have to make a physical uh, effort to to deal with it and it's like heavy it's I don't know it's it's just something uh, that intrigues me. To, to to play with it and to to work with it uh, maybe I like big things I like big formats when I look back in my past I, I see that so many of my projects have it's been large-scale formats uh, even uh, not only paintings but also if I build institutions or if I do something it's always large-scale format so format is uh, important. I don't know. I don't because it's standing. So maybe it's also because I'm standing. Uh, maybe it's also. Maybe it's like a door. I don't know. Uh, it just feels. It just feels right. It fits me. It fits my personality. Yeah, I was thinking of, of uh, working with that topic actually for a long time, but uh, but there's been so many other side project that has uh, uh, that I've been working on and exhibited before that and maybe also I needed some time because you know it's it's uh, it's something that uh, it requires some 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 effort in terms of reading specific reports on on uh, on on the global warming itself also and to uh, 
And it's I think many artists are a little bit afraid of touching the 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 topic itself. I it's very I I think it's really, and I think it's really strange that so few artists actually dare to touch the the topic. Uh, and I was also thinking that um, there could also be a lot of critique of you know making beautiful paintings and deal with with uh, with uh, with uh, such a touchy topic uh, so um, but but at least I, I i really did into the framework of my knowledge now and my visual language now i thought it was a a, a good presentation of the of the topic and and um but I mean, it's uh, it's strange that nobody wants to go into the topic. Uh, they don't even want to discuss it in the art world, not not here in Norway. So uh, I tried at least, but there is no coherence in the in the art world about it. Ice, you know, ice is uh, something that can have many different qualities. It can have the strictness, uh, as almost like in glass. Uh, but it can also have the, you know, the dripping shapes. It can have the whiteness, the cold, the coldness of it. But uh, so some of the paintings I try to approach the coldness the aesthetic uh, of coldness or to enter something which is cold but uh, but also to have the variations within the theme both in hard soft cold warm uh, there really isn't any boundaries of how you can depict or how you can present the aesthetics of of uh, something which is cold in the ground uh, and that's what I really love about uh, the abstract painting it can be anything there is no boundaries I can I can postulate anything about how permafrost looks like or uh, how it behaves or how it feels or how it will look like uh, it's it's up to me and that's what's so nice about it and and also to 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 play with with the uh, the image of permafrost into something which is completely it looks like something completely different it's so far away from your image of what permafrost could be and that's also fun to play with i think but it's um, you know red is a very uh, it's a very beautiful color I really love red but I'd never dare to 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 play with red as a foundation color uh, but it's a paperwork and um, uh, when you work with with the watercolors uh, you have the possibility to work directly into the wet paint so I worked with blue and uh, it's more like to show how I think in terms of how to use the space because it's space is a framework but it's a space and how I think as when you when you make um, uh, how you see the how you, how you how you play with your eye it's like playing with your eye how where should your eye follow on this red uh, foundation to understand how i think when i start to construct a painting how i see how i should divide uh, this into a good uh, motif and uh, how it should be played well and and then when you have made this really really easy fast drawing because it's a drawing basically and then you have the the this 
more digital language which on the top which is the bridge so it's just these three elements you have the red foundation you have the drawing and then you have the grading from the spray box and then done it's very easy work but it's nice it's very light and it shows how i think when i create a painting if you reduce it down to the basic elements I did not go to the north, um, but of course we have we have a permafrost here in Norway, uh, but not as deep deep rooted as in let's say in Siberia where the permafrost goes 1,500 uh, meters in the ground, but we have permafrost in Norway, so it's it's of course related to my. Um, my country's nature as well. So Norway strategically is also a country that represents the cooling system of the planet. So it's of course in, uh, in natural for me to, to bring up the theme as uh, something that uh, at least preserves the cooling system of the planet and working against the global warming. So we have to protect the permafrost. I think there should be much more present in the public uh, discussion uh, about permafrost specifically and the, the function of the permafrost and the polar vortex of course and all the cooling elements of, uh, of the earth. Uh, in, in Norway there's, there's so much... Uh, I think the, the, the media focuses on way too much uh, things which is far far away from from uh, from the topics that we should be discussing uh, there's so many journalists just writing every day about uh, donald trump and american politics and things which is really it's not relevant to 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 norway we should focus on our uh, national politics when it comes to uh, preserving of course our nature and uh, how and what we can do to preserve it and to 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 make it a more sustainable uh, nature uh, but uh, it's it's of course very difficult because it's very much anchored within uh, since we're a cold country we also have to travel to our work so most of most of the citizens they have they have cars they have diesel cars or they have gas cars um, and how can we change from that kind of of uh, transportational system to a more more uh, environmental friendly uh, uh, infrastructure uh, and how do we do that and how do we deal with it and you know we're also an oil producing country so we have lots of guilt uh, when it comes to this uh, topic, which it's, it's difficult for us to, to talk about because it made us prosperous and made our economy uh, to what it's, it is today. So it's like, it's sketchy to talk about because then we also have to talk about what should we do and what should we stop should we stop the oil production or how do we deal with this as an oil nation uh, because we're the i don't know we are the third third or fourth biggest uh, oil uh, exporting country in the world so uh, it's difficult it's a touchy top topic for us Yeah, but I think what Norway did uh, when it comes to the electric cars uh, is very smart because the, um, it has been given an incentive so you don't pay taxes uh, like 25% which is called MUMS, the VAT, on electric cars. 
so of course it's a more affordable car if you want to buy a new car then it's more affordable to buy an electric car, uh, car than a diesel car uh, and if you want to change a car park uh, for let's say the next 20 years if you if you still have this incentive then you will actually manage to change all the car parks from diesel or gas into electric so i think norway uh, did a very smart thing when it comes to those incentives uh, to electric cars and uh, if they promise to keep it of course people will will buy uh, electric cars more than than uh, diesel cars and you see also on the big manufacturers of cars worldwide everybody's uh, producing uh, lots of new electric cars now and uh, wants to get part of the race so uh, so the question is you know is it is it sustainable because you know the the pol pollution related to the production is also big you know and what is the substitute what about these batteries and the electricity will that also be part of of uh, a new uh, is that sustainable or we don't know <laughs> it's tricky it's tricky but i think it's at least as an artist i think it's very important to to at least have some try to get as much possible knowledge about these kind of uh, things that affects everybody and to take part of it and also to reflect upon it in in uh, in my act my, my practice as an artist and talk about it like in in in, in this uh, video I think it's I think it's good to have uh, that an artist should be involved in in uh, in in life because we are in a way a little bit on the outskirts of society in a way you know we don't we don't produce things that you you need we're not part of society as uh, the normal people so we should also um, participate in society and be part of it and i think uh, if you look a little bit in the past the artist has always been uh, you know a voice in the society and uh, express themselves about what's going on uh, also in politics uh, and i think the artist today is a little bit uh, on the outskirts of it and maybe the artist is a little bit afraid of of uh, telling what they think about either internal politics in a country or if it's uh, international politics or economy or environment or it can be many things so uh, but uh, I've been working seven years as a uh, very political in in the arab world uh, and after that it's sort of it's not it's not something that i can separate from from my uh, my artistic practice anymore that i have also political uh, opinions and statements and i think it's important to pull it's it's impossible to to uh, not to to raise my voice when it comes to to uh, to that and to to be aware of it and to state my opinions about things yeah because uh, Jerusalem was my home for many uh, many years Jerusalem and Ramallah because uh, just to give you a very very brief brief background, I in 2002 I initiated that there should be established an Academy of Fine Arts uh, in Ramallah for the Palestinians. 
this was one year after the attack on the World Trade Center in New York. And uh, when George Bush got elected and uh, his invasion of uh, Afghanistan and then later on also Iraq. And there was this growing Islamophobia around the world and uh, it made me aware of all the aftermaths of uh, the Second World War and all the problems related to it, especially in the... I mean, not only in Middle East, but many of these problems, they go back to uh, not only the Second World War, but also to the Ottoman Empire and the First World War and things like that. And former former uh, British colonies, French colonies, interference from the Russian Tsar. And, you know, it's so complicated, but um, but everything is connected in a way. And the totalitarianism complex is about all these, all these uh, complicated matters, which, which just piles up in a place like Middle East, uh, where where where, the, where there is so much frustration and historically, so many different countries leaders that has interfered and intervened and just destroyed uh, country after country. The reason why I chose uh, the title Totalitarianism Complex is because you know the trial of Adolf Eichmann was there, he was captured in uh, Argentina, and uh, of course Nazi Germany was a totalitarian state. And uh, since I've been working in in Palestine and been a lot in Israel, I feel that you know this this way of thinking, this racist thing, thinking that was in the Nazi Germany is so much present there too. I never experienced this kind of hate. And this uh, the hate that you don't... It's impossible to discuss with, the, with this hate. It's, it's, like, it's like a wall. And they're building a wall there too. Uh, they don't want to talk to you about it. They just, they just want to draw the conclusion. And uh, they just want to kill each other. It's so brutal. It's so totalitarian. And uh, and it's so complex, of course, which which hands to the title. And you know, after working in Middle East for seven years, I just I don't I don't trust uh, the humans anymore. It's just we are just so crazy. We are so crazy. We haven't learned anything from the past. We don't learn from history. And uh, that's what's what I found so scary about uh, being there, really. But nevertheless, I think it's so important that uh, there is initiatives that brings some sort of uh, positive energy to the place because it lacks the positivity. Uh, so there should be more of these small uh, positive thinking these small spaces where you can have positive thinking like in a, an art academy or a museum or a place where there's good vibes because it's so much bad vibes mm -hmm.